Hey everyone, I hope that you're doing well. Um, I just wanted to check in with you now that we're halfway done with the class. Uh, I know it's uh, unbelievable to hear that probably. Uh, the intercession just really flies by. Um, so our, our course is halfway over. Today's Monday, the 24th of August. Um, and we are on the second day of Unit 4 today. So um, that's where things are at. Of course, if you have uh, any assignments that you missed, you can still turn those in for credit. Uh, particularly, um, I wanted to say a couple of things about the final project. Um, on Saturday, the final project topics and research questions were due. Yesterday, I read through those and sent you feedback via Blackboard. Please let me know if you have questions about the feedback that I sent um, or if you need help with the research. Um, so remember, the next step that is due on Wednesday night is to create your... Excuse me, I almost sneezed to create your long list of sources. And so I've called it a long list because um, you should include anything that you find um, about your topic as you're doing your research, um, even things that you're not going to actually use necessarily for the final project on Adobe Spark. Um, you don't have to annotate the, annotate the sources. Um, you should use a bibliographic format. Um, please see the um, final project instructions for more about that. If you don't know um, APA or MLA or, or Chicago style, um, I have a link to how to use uh, or how to format a bibliography in Chicago style. Uh, Chicago is the one that historians use. But again, if you know APA or MLA better because that's the field that you're in, uh, it's more than fine to use one of those. Just have a consistent uh, citation format for your bibliography. Also recognize that you need to have specific types of sources for the final project. So you need at least one primary source about your topic. And remember, in general, primary sources are those that were created at the time of the event. There are a lot of those that are digitized. Um, there are a lot of digitized newspapers in particular um, that you'll be able to use. It really depends on your topic. Um, you know, also, depending on your topic, your primary source could be a work of art if you're researching uh, artistic movements in New Mexico. Um, it, it really kind of depends on the way that you've asked your research questions. So if you have any uh, questions or you're wondering a little bit about whether or not you found a primary source for your particular topic, uh, please ask. Uh, just send me an email and I'll be happy to uh, talk about that with you and let you know if you're on the right track. Um, also, you need to have at least two academic primary, excuse me, academic secondary sources. Those are sources that you can find at the CNM Libraries uh, webpage through a search there. Um, academic sources include peer-reviewed journal articles. They also include books that were published by university presses. Um, so you could also use Google Books for that. Google Books has a preview of most books, not all books, but most of them, so that you could probably you know, read enough of the book to complete your project um, online. Uh, without having to try to get a physical book. And I know that that is uh, extra difficult right now in the time of the pandemic. So uh, please leverage all of the digital sources that you can. Uh, those are usually the, the primary source and the academic sources are usually the ones that uh, folks tend to get hung up on a little bit. So again, if you need help with any of those, don't hesitate to ask. Otherwise, you'll need to have uh, two or three other secondary sources uh, those can range from internet sources to articles online or, or a various uh, range of things. Um, I've also asked you to, to get some social media sources. Um, the idea there is just for you to see if people are talking about your topic on social media. They may not be, so if that's the case, just say I couldn't find anything on social media. Um, just write that in your long list and that's fine. Um, do remember that the final project itself is an annotated bibliography, but you're going to build it on Adobe Spark. So it's going to be a digital uh, multimedia enhanced um, annotated bibliography. In that bibliography, you're going to write a, an annotation or a paragraph for each of your sources that addresses three things. First, you're going to explain a little bit about what the contents of the source are. Second, you're going to explain in specific terms why you find that source to be credible and then last, you're going to explain with specific examples um, how that source helped you to answer your research question. It's okay if it didn't necessarily. You thought it would, but then you read through it and it didn't. 
um, that's an acceptable answer, but you do need to explain the source did address these issues, but not my research question. It's not enough to just say this source didn't answer my research question. Um, so that's that last step. That one is due Sunday at noon, so that's the last day of class. Um, please let me know what questions you have. Also, one other thing before I go uh, about research projects, you may find as you're looking up sources that your question doesn't really make sense anymore, or it doesn't quite fit the sources that you've been able to find. If that's the case, it's fine to revise your question um, so that it fits the sources that you do have available and so that you'll be able to have a strong project. Um, that happens all the time with research. Uh, people have to revise their questions, they have to revise their assumptions based on the evidence that we find. Um, so when that happens, uh, don't be alarmed. It's to be expected. Um, all right, that's, I think, everything I wanted to say. I hope that you're all doing well. Um, please let me know if there's anything I can do for you to help out as you continue the coursework, as you work on the final project, um, any of those things. And uh, I'll talk to you soon.